What's going on YouTube? My name is Will Walker and this is the William Walker Company Project channel. Last week on Instagram, I asked uh, if people wanted me to do sort of a, a comprehensive overview on considerations when choosing a hardwood, uh, especially if you're just getting started out in woodworking. Uh, I get this a lot where people are scared to uh, use a piece of wood or uh, go buy a piece of wood because they're scared they're going to screw up their project and it's going to be expensive and that can definitely be the case so I thought I would run down uh, all of the North American domestic hardwoods that are available to me with the caveat of I can only give you reference to what's available near me and the prices near me Wood can vary very much uh, in price across the country and across the world. So uh, I am in central Virginia, which is in the mid-Atlantic on the east coast of the United States. Uh, so I will be speaking to uh, the prices and availability in my area. I am not going to be getting into exotics um, and imported woods uh, because I generally use um, FSC certified sustainably forested hardwoods um, that are domestic to me. So I've got a bunch of wood laid out um, from cheapest to most expensive. For the purposes of this uh, discussion, um, I'm going to be referring to uh, rough sawn lumber. Um, if you don't have a planer or jointer in your shop, you would want to be buying S4S or that's surfaced four sides. If you haven't seen my video on the ultimate guide to hardwood lumber, uh, check it out up here. And I go over all those terms, S4S, S2S, R1E, rough sawn, FAS, yada, yada, yada. But um, I just want to talk about the woods. So in my pile, I have uh, the cheapest, which would be poplar, all the way up to walnut, which is the most expensive uh, domestic hardwood in my area. It has definitely skyrocketed in the last 10 years or so. So for this, I have uh, poplar, hickory, ash, or wormy soft maple, soft maple, flat sawn or plain sawn white oak, quarter sawn red oak, curly soft maple, cherry, bird's eye hard maple, and walnut. Okay, so starting at the lower end of the pile, the, the less expensive end of the line, um, these four woods are fantastic to get started with because they're really, really affordable. Okay, so the four hardwoods that I wanted to start with um, that I think are great for beginners, uh, it's not a big investment cost-wise, would be poplar, hickory, ash, and wormy soft maple. Firstly, I want to talk about where to get your lumber. Uh, if at all possible, avoid the home stores, um, the blue one or the orange one, because their hardwoods uh, sold and their lumber aisles are ridiculously marked up. Poplar is a great wood to start with. I would choose this over uh, pine or spruce or fir any day uh, working with it, those woods tend to uh, be very soft and very kind of uh, mushy. So working with them can be very frustrating if you're using hand tools at all, um, trying to make dovetails or, or things like that. Uh, poplar machines really, really well. It is relatively soft for a hardwood, but it takes paint. It's got a very buttery grain um, and it's very forgiving uh, and very, very cheap. Um, so this is a great wood to get started with. Some people don't like poplar because it can have a sort of a greenish tint uh, or hue, uh, but you can also find poplar with beautiful purples that run through it. Um, and I think it's a very, very underestimated wood. It's also a great secondary wood. If you're building a big piece of furniture, like a dresser or something, um, you can use this in the, in the components and not have the show faces be poplar, but you know, in, interior components can be made of poplar and you can save a lot of money that way. Next up is hickory. Hickory can have um, some pinks and browns and uh, some pale colors running through it. It's incredibly hard, but it's also very affordable near me, uh, coming in at just over $2 a board foot. Um, this is a great wood uh, to to build with. Um, it'll make 
you know, heirloom furniture. It's very sturdy. Again, it's very hard, so it can be difficult to machine and work with hand tools. Next up is ash. This is white ash, and it is a fantastic wood. Uh, it has got a grain structure very, very similar to oak, but it's cheaper. Um, ash comes in around 250 a board foot. It's a, it's a great wood. Um, to substitute in place of oak as well. I've been told about the emerald ash borer killing all of these trees and they won't be around in 10 years, but they told me that 10 years ago and it's still readily available. So I'm not sure the situation, what's going on there, but um, it's great wood and it might not be here forever. And finally, on the cheap side of things is wormy soft maple. Uh, this is also referred to as ambrosia maple. And some people very much love the look of ambrosia. It's when the beetle, the ambrosia beetle gets into the tree and then it does its damage and it leaves these marks uh, in its wake. Some people really, really love the look of ambrosia maple. Uh, in the furniture world, in the hardwood grading world, this is actually considered a defect and so it's it's downgraded and sold as uh, a lesser wood, and that drives the price down, which is great. This comes in at 285 a board foot. Next up would be what I would consider my mid grade, um, my mid grade woods. So that's uh, just flat sawn, uh, soft maple, white oak, and quarter sawn red oak. Uh, I didn't include flats on red oak because they're generally around the same price in my area. Red oak comes in a little bit cheaper, um, but white oak seems to be more desirable uh, by clients and it's liked more for its weather resistance where red oak uh, will definitely rot quicker if left in an outdoor environment. This comes in at about 375 a board foot uh, and oak kind of got a bad rap uh, due to the kitchens of the 80s and 90s, sort of that golden oak look that I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, but I, it's a wonderful wood and it's making a comeback. Uh, it's very hard. It machines well. It's a little, it's got an open grain, so it can be a little stringy working with hand tools, but it's a great wood. And I think it's definitely uh, one that you should consider uh, if you're kind of in that novice range um, and you want to make a very sturdy piece of furniture. Uh, oak is also very dense. It's heavy. Um, so know that if you build the whole dresser out of uh, white oak, it, that dresser is going to be heavy. Moving on to quarter sawn red oak. Red oak is going uh, to have more of a, a reddish hue to it than white oak. White oak is actually kind of brown, uh, where red oak is uh, more rosy. Um, and when I say quarter sawn, it's the orientation in which the, uh, the log is sawn and it gives you very straight grain. Um, the grain is actually vertical when you're looking at the end grain, but it gives you these medullary rays, which are, are pockets that bring nutrients to the tree while it's alive. And this is very, very classic, uh, to use in arts and crafts pieces, um, from the arts and crafts movement or the mission, uh, style. Um, think about people like Gustav Stickley in the furniture that uh, is still being made under the Stickley name. Uh, he's long since passed. Um, to me, uh, quarter sawn oak can be a little overwhelming, so I like to use it sparingly. Uh, it is still a wonderful wood, but it can overpower a piece very quickly, in my opinion. Moving on to the more premium woods. Um, and some things to consider here. Uh, so this is curly soft maple. And again, when I'm talking about soft maple, it's any maple that isn't the hard maple <laughs> or the sugar maple or rock maple, uh, as it's called. Now, when I talk about curly, uh, it's this undulating grain that uh, when it's surfaced and uh, finish is applied, it's, it gives this beautiful, what they call chatoyance, uh, or it's the cat's eye effect. And it acts differently as uh, the light changes and it can add just a whole nother dimension to uh, your work. Now, something to consider with uh, curly maple or curly any wood for that matter is uh, this beautiful curl. While it is beautiful, it is hard to uh, it's hard to work both with uh, machines and hand planes and things. Uh, this grain has a tendency to tear out. Um, so. If you're inexperienced with uh, sharpening your hand tools or you've got uh, 
uh, dull blades or knives in your planer or jointer, um, this will definitely tear out and that can lead to a lot of frustration um, in an inexperienced woodworker uh, environment. Um, so my, my recommendation there would be to work up your skills, learn how to sharpen your plane irons, keep the knives in your uh, power planers very sharp, and learn to read the grain and and learn to how not to get tear out because this is a beautiful wood, but it does come at a premium. Um, now you're creeping up into the $6 a board foot uh, price range, which uh, can add up very, very quickly um, if you're buying a lot of it. Uh, moving from there is cherry. Cherry is a beautiful, beautiful wood. It's very classic. The shakers love to use cherry. Yeah, it works beautifully. Uh, it's very buttery smooth. Um, it can burn fairly easily though um, from your uh, table saw and things like that, but that stands out relatively easy. One thing to consider with cherry is that it's photosensitive. So it darkens with age. So this is a freshly, uh, freshly plain surface. Um, you can see how sort of lighter colored it is. And then that is what it turns into. And over time that will get even darker. So it is photosensitive. So you, if you bought a cherry board, uh, don't leave it in front of a sunny window that uh, half the board gets sun on it and half doesn't because you'll actually get tan lines in your cherry. Just another consideration and when building furniture, um, if it's going to be sitting in a sunny area, make sure the whole piece gets sun or else you'll get a, a weird line on your piece. Uh, this is also around $6 a board foot, maybe a little bit less. Great, great wood though. This is bird's eye hard maple. So hard maple comes from the sugar maple. And when I say bird's eyes, it's these little swirls that end up in the wood. You can get these in other species. I've seen it in ash and walnut, but most commonly it's found in the hard maple and sold as such bird's eye maple. Interesting fact about bird's eye. Some people say that it's where the uh, birds were pecking in to get the, the maple the syrup, the uh, the sugar out of the sugar maple, uh, and then the, that's the tree healing around those peck marks. But uh, according to scientists, that isn't conclusive. That's actually not uh, something that they can prove. So I don't know. Fun little fact about that. And then moving on to walnut. You've probably seen walnut used in every YouTube woodworkers videos. Uh, it's very hot right now. It's very popular. I would say most of the client projects that come out of my shop are walnut because uh, people really, really like it right now. And uh, it goes in trends. Um, this is between eight and $10 a board foot. So with walnut, you're definitely going to be invested more so you don't want to screw up with walnut. Uh, it does get very, very expensive very, very quickly. That's not to say that you shouldn't work with walnut. It works beautifully. Something to consider though is you might want to wear PPE breathing protection, have an air filter, uh, a window open. I've actually developed somewhat of a sensitivity to walnut dust. Um, and if I'm not wearing a mask uh, or having dust collection and air filtration going, I can feel almost sick the next day, like almost fluish the next day. It's the wood that keeps on giving. All right, folks, so those are some considerations when uh, deciding on which wood you want to start your project with um, and having different skill levels and some of the more affordable woods uh, all the way up to some of the premium woods. What I would suggest to you is find a hardwood dealer in your area and get their price list. In my experience, uh, the closer you get to the bigger metropolitan uh, areas like for me would be Washington DC uh, the prices of things go up but maybe you can find a local Sawyer that also has stock that he dries to sell or uh, a hardwood dealer in your area there are some online retailers of hardwoods that ship uh, nationwide as well as internationally so I would look into those if you don't have a hardwood dealer near you but really I would stay away from the big home centers uh, if you can absolutely at all costs avoid it uh, that you're gonna pay a lot more and you're gonna get more frustrated with mistakes because of your uh, your investment in your project. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm gonna get back to working on this big walnut uh, Nakashima inspired table build and there will be a video on that when it's done but I gotta get back to work on that. So until next time guys, I'm Will Walker. This is the William Walker Company Project Channel. I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching.